Amen. Praise the Lord. This is one um, verse of the Bible that um, basically speaks to us about our lives and um, the fact that God wants us to have a good life and a good career. If we read, um, can we all read Psalm 127 verse 1 again? Where you see um, the, um, say my, I think, and um, yeah, exchange the with my. So more like, except the Lord build my house. Can, you, can we all read it together? Psalm 127, verse 1, 1, 2, 3, go. I labor in vain, I build it, except the Lord keep my city. I, the watchman, wake it, but in vain. So now that you've personalized it, you can be able to see that except God does it for you, except God build your career for you, except God is in every aspect of your career journey, your labor would be in vain. And um, I'll, I'll start by sharing a brief story um, of myself. Um, when, I was, I, when I was 12 years old, um, I kind of had a faint knowledge of Christ. I was trying to understand whom God was. And that was when I was just trying to explore my relationship with God. And um, during that time, it was around that time that I had this leading that God told me, I think I was like 12, 13, and God told me that you're not going to school in... Um, Nigeria. I am from Nigeria. I know we are so many people from um, so many nations here. God told me that you're not going to school in this country. I would take thee out into a land and there I would bless thee. And um, I, I took that word from God and I ran with it like Joseph ran with the dream that God has given him. I um, always said, God, God I had this deep feeling in me that God said, I'm not going to school here. Right? And fast forward, um, when I was done with my high school, I started applying for schools in Nigeria. Um, my parents wouldn't allow me as the only girl in their family to travel out, right? Um, I started applying for schools. I was, I did jump like three times. I tried to get admission into a lot of schools, but every road was blocked. And no matter the effort my parents took for me to be able to school in Nigeria, it didn't happen. Even there was a time that um, I, there's this university called the University of Ibadan. They told somebody to monitor every day for me to write an exam that would put me in the school. The person continued monitoring every day. And when it was the time for um, me to be able to write the exam, the person missed the day. Of, it was, the exam was supposed to be written the next day. The person forgot to monitor that day. And um, the person now came back the next Monday and told my parents, oh, they've written that exam the previous day. And that was how my parents now was able to allow me to leave and um, to, to leave the country and um, write the exams that brought me to the United States eventually. Why am I saying this? Because God has a plan for everyone. I don't know if God has revealed this plan for you, but God has a plan for you and your own career. And that leads me, I'm going to be going through about five or six points here. Um, that leads me to my first point, setting the stage of your career with God. Before you choose a college, make sure you ask God, God, what do you want me? Which college do you want me to go to? What course do you want me to go to? You need to set the stage of your career with God. I don't know where you are now, um, but before you get started in any job, for those people that are working, set the stage with God. God, which job do you want me to do? Before you go to the graduate, that graduate school, set the stage, as God. You can't do anything without God. And that's what Psalm 127 verse 1 was saying. Except the Lord build your house, your labor is going to be in vain. And when you choose a course, ask God, um, God, should I do this course? I know sometimes speaking to God is like, okay, not really, uh, it's not something that is very practical to a lot of us. But it could be just, um, just say it, God, should I do this course? And in one way or the other, God is going to reveal to you, oh, yes, my daughter, do this. Oh, yes, my daughter, do that. And I would say just in everything, whether you're having exams in school, I pray to God, God, um, help me in this exam. I'm going to write this exam. Teach me what is going to come out. I can remember when I was in college, I would not lie to you by the grace of God. There are some exams I would go to because I've prayed a lot for the exams. Um, when I don't know the answer, I'm like, God, okay, please teach me. And I'll be looking through my um, report sheets, A, B, C, D. And when I get to the real answer, we see a flash. I don't know if it has happened to anyone here. Has it happened to anyone here? Um, okay, <laughs> maybe I'm so strange. But 
it, it requires you to really spend time and ask God in every stage of your career, God, can you please teach me, lead me, um, show me the way on how to do it. And God will help us in Jesus' name. So our first point is what? Setting the stage with God. Make sure that you don't miss that point. Um, in everything you do, go and ask God. In every step of your career journey, make sure that you're asking God, what should you do? The next thing um, we're going to talk about is strengths. Move towards the area of your greatest strengths. What are your strengths? Look at yourself. Examine yourself. When I, when I got out of um, high school, I wanted to be a doctor. I really, <laughs> I mean, right from when I was um, young, I've been saying, oh, I'll be a doctor, I'll be a doctor. And when it was time for me to write my jamb and waiek, um, I, I, I remember studying for my um, waiek. And because I wanted to be a doctor, I spent a lot of time studying for biology and chemistry. I burnt the night candle. I can remember, I, as I'm standing, I can honestly remember flipping through all these pages of the textbook because I wanted to be a doctor, right? But when it came to math and physics, I didn't need to study so much about on it on them because I'm good at math and physics. When my WIAC results came back, I got the shock of my life for my biology and chemistry that I spent a lot of time studying on. I got CFOs, right? I got double Cs on both of them. <laughs> but my, for my math and English that I can tell you that I didn't really spend so much time on, I got distinctions on those exams. And that was when I came to, it came to my realization that I'm trying to go into a place that is not my strength. My strength is with numbers. Right, um, and today you too can do the same thing. Examine yourself. Go to the areas of your greatest strength. Which part? What I? What makes? You, what can you do um, overnight without sleeping, and you would still feel okay with it? I can solve math overnight, and I'll be fine with it because that is my strength. And just moving to the area of your greatest strength as early as possible which will really help you to excel in life because your career is a long-term journey so make sure that you're doing things that you're strong in and um okay let me see so for those people that are applying to jobs apply to jobs that you can do easily if not, um, you will just be one person in that department or one person in your job area where um, they wouldn't just come to you because you are really struggling. I've seen, I've seen so many people that some of them say, okay, I see them mostly in the medical field, right? Um, some people say, okay, I want to be a doctor, but you see them struggling and struggling. I want to read, and you see them burning the night candle and they write um, another exam, and it's just so much effort. And you see some other people, they just do it much more easily. Like, well, you, you can try. Um, it's good to have purpose and ambition, but moving to where your strength is would really help you to sail through life and career easily. And God will help us all in Jesus' name. The next thing is to be strategic. Um, so we've gone through um, three points now. The first one is setting the stage with God. The second one is um, move towards the area of your greatest strengths. The third one is be strategic. And I tell people this, look before you leap. So before you go into a career, um, look very well. Interview people that have gone before you. Be very strategic before you make a move. Um, if you're an undergrad, you could possibly be in a place where you're not doing what you really like. Be strategic and look forward, maybe for your grad school. Um, interview people, talk to them. If you know, okay, maybe, for instance, I'll use myself as an example. Um, my greatest strength is math, right? I'm good with numbers. But because my greatest strength is math, does, that doesn't mean I should just go and pick math and study math, right? Um, I had to look, interview. I can remember talking to so many people. Um, I was calling, um, I went to someone's house. I saw that, okay, he's doing well in um, this field. I told him, what do you do? How do you do it? Um, how, how, what, do you, what makes you, what, how does this course go? Which subject um, do you do? How much, what is the range of salary people coming out of this course make? So before you even choose a course, you should be able to see the end goal, like look before you leap, right? Um, so that's why I, I ended up, okay, um, okay, it looks like the IT field is good. Um, after talking to people and interviewing people, 
okay, which part of the IT field should I go to where I can still use my strengths to be successful? And I started researching, okay, well, this school gives, um, this school is very good in this. What do people that st study in this school, how much do they make when they come out of school? Make sure you're doing your own work. Be very strategic, look, and make sure that um, you're getting, you're getting, not just because you're strong in this. Some people are strong in drawing. Some people are very good with art, right? But just be, going to do fine art it's not, might not be enough. You could do graphic designing. You could do advertisement. There's so many things to do. So make sure that you're really strategic and uh, make sure that you analyze your strengths and also look at the potential for that your strength to give you um, a life that you would, a, a life um, or for your strength to be able to give you the type of life that you would like to live after um, you graduate or you, or you come out of that field. And God will help us in Jesus' name. And that goes also to the working class people. Be strategic before you pick that job. Don't just pick the job just because of the money. Think about it, look, make sure you ask them, how, how are the managers in this company? Are, are they good people? Are they people that, um, that frustrate you when you're working? Because it's something, people don't leave jobs because of money, people leave jobs because of bad managers. Make sure that you do your own work, talk to people that are, in the, that are already in the company, ask them, how are people in this, um, how long do they work? Do you have to travel a lot? I'm a working mom. Do I have to? I can't travel. Um, does this job require me to travel a lot? Um, I, is this something that would basically choke me up? Or do you guys work weekends? Um, make sure that you do your own work and you're strategic. And God will help us in Jesus' name. The next thing I want to talk about is... Um, set intentional career goals. After being, after setting the stage with God and um, knowing your strength and being strategic, make sure you start setting goals. Set intentional career goals. And when I mean set goals, make sure that you're setting both short-term goals and long-term goals. Um, example of a long, a long-term goal for a student is: I want to graduate in four years with a 3.5 GPA. That is a long-term goal. Maybe you're just getting started, you're looking at four years, okay, um, this is my goal. And possibly you could even have a long, longer term goal, like, okay, I want to graduate in four years with a 3.5 GPA so that I can work in this great company, right? So that is, is your goal that will give you the push to be able to really study and do everything to be able to come out properly. So after I send, setting that long-term goal, a shorter-term goal will be like, because I want to graduate in four years and come out with a 3.5 GPA, then I'm going to take my course procure and I'm going to list out all the classes and divide them into four years. If I have to do some summer classes, I'm going to add the summer classes to it. If I have to do some winter classes just to meet up with our four years, I'm going to add winter classes to it. But this is my goal. I want to do this. And um, that long-term goal will help you and give you the push. It's also your goal of maybe, OK, I want to make a 3.5 GPA. That is what is going to push you to study in the night, to go to the library when other people are playing. So, Make sure that you're setting intentional career goals. If you're um, a working class person, make sure that you're looking at where you are now and where you want to be in possibly five years' time. Do you want to be in the same position? Um, or do you want, so for a, an example, long-term goal is I want to move into leadership positions um, in the next five to six years. I, I want to um, possibly increase my salary by possibly $50,000. How can I get there in the next four to five years or six years times, time? And when you do that, um, that's your long-term goal. Your shorter-term goal, like, oh, because I want to move into these leadership positions, then I have to take on some more leadership roles in the company. I have to maybe join the company for more recruiting events. I have to possibly um, deliver much more excellently. I have to make my manager's work much easier. I have to make sure that I'm talking to my manager. I'm taking a lot of um, burden away from my manager. Because honestly speaking, the only way you can really move up in your career is by making your manager's work easier. Because if, you, if your manager is still there struggling to do his own work and your manager can't move up, there's no space for you at your manager's level. So you're, you're just um, taking time to set intentional career goals on where you want to be, 
would really help you to be able to move up in your career journey. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Um, we are almost there. Um, two more things. The next thing I want to talk about is um, as much as um, we all want to make it in our career, it's very important. I've heard a lot of preachers stand here and talk to us. It's very important to serve God greatly. While you're in college, while you're, in, you're working, um, I, I don't know how to over or underestimate this. I don't know how to overestimate this point. It's very important to serve God greatly while you're pushing your career. Um, Malachi chapter 3 verse 18 Malachi 3.18. It says, sorry. Okay, yes. And it says, then you shall return and descend between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serve God and him that serve God not. Another, um, another version of the Bible says, God makes a difference between those that serve him and those that serve him not. Sometimes that is what makes the real difference. A lot of people put a lot of effort into their career, but they don't see them, they don't see it blossom because they don't take time to serve God. I would say when you're in college, don't just focus on your books. Make sure that you're focusing on one way that you're serving God. And that's a, that was a secret that um, a pastor gave me when I was in college. He told me wherever I find myself, I, myself, I should make sure that I'm serving God there. Um, make sure that you are involved, whether there's a deeper life there or not. Make sure that you're involved in one way or the other serving God. Um, I have so many examples. I've seen so many examples of how God makes the difference between them that serve him and them that serve him not. I'll use my husband as an example. Um, when he was in school, I know he, he usually drives about four hours every week, four hours to school, and on the weekends, he drives four hours back. He's always coming back during the weekends to serve God in the church and do things for God. Funny thing, a lot of his classmates, they stay in school. They were doing their PhD. But by the grace of God, he was the first person to graduate. And even the second, uh, the pe second person that even graduated with him, he was actually supposed to be the only person that graduated in exactly four years of his PhD. Why? Because as he was serving God, God was also at the background doing, um, doing his own work for him. God kind of made a way for him. And the funny thing is that he graduated three months before COVID started. So he was the only person that could actually get a job before COVID hit. And when other people, um, when other people graduated, there was already COVID and it was much harder for them to get jobs. Why? Because as he was serving God, God was also at the back doing his own work service for him. I'll use also one more example. I, I when I was in college, um, I, like I said, I came from Nigeria to school in the United States. And um, when I got there, I found a fellowship in, in um, my school then. And the fellowship was good, but a lot of people there, they graduated and they left. And it now became, it now became upon me and one other of my friend to actually plant a church in this school. It was a lot of work. I could remember um, then I have to go for evangelism on Saturday. I have to be the, I don't sing like Brother Femi would say when he was talking about um, it's, it's time is in Tennessee. I usually don't sing, but I was, I was the choir mistress. I was the children church teacher, the Sunday school teacher, the prayer leader, everything of the new church that was just planted. It was a lot of work trying to do that with school and all that, but Honestly speaking, I would say because I, by the grace of God, I was there serving God and trying to do the work of God in my college. God blessed me tremendously. I wasn't looking for a husband. God brought a husband to me. I've seen it happen a lot of times where people are just serving God while they are in their career or doing things. Um, God always makes a difference. And it's very important for you to know that wherever you are in, as you're pushing your career, don't forget the service of God. It's very important. I couldn't say this um, career talk without talking about the importance of serving God. While Whether you're at work or you're still in school, make sure that you're doing something for God because it's God that makes a difference in the long run. Praise the Lord. 
The last point is sowing to the kingdom. The purpose of us all making money is honestly to build the kingdom of God. Whether you're, you're still an undergrad, you're a graduate student, or you are um, a working class person, make sure that you're sowing into the kingdom. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. These are the real secrets of success. Honestly speaking, um, out there, they will tell you the secret of success is actually um, read, do things. But honestly speaking, the real secret of lasting success is serving God, sowing into, uh, as, along with all the other points I gave to you, is honestly serving God and sowing into the kingdom of God. Um, put your money in the Bible. So when you get your first salary or your first fruit, put it into the kingdom of God. I've seen it happen and happen a lot of times. It always yields a back result. Make sure that you're sowing into the kingdom of God. When you're, <laughs> by the grace of God, every increase of salary, put it back to God. Make sure that you're tightening, you're giving of your resources to God. Because we are the people that God has put on earth to build his kingdom. We are the people that God has put on earth. Um, if we don't do it, nobody out there will do it for us. If your money is not coming in, the money that by the grace of God you've worked for, you've God has built your career for you, and you now are, you're now making, by God's grace, a lot of money. If you, if you don't put your money into the kingdom of God, um, nobody else will build the kingdom of God. That's why your money is very important. So by the grace of God, make sure that you're sowing into the kingdom of God as you build your career. And that is what God is going to use to bless you and bless you marvelously in Jesus' name. Um, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of thy increase. And so shall thy, thy ban be plenty. That is honestly the, rich, the um, secret to lasting riches and success. And God will continue to make us all have a great career and bless us in Jesus' name. Just to recap everything I said, um, the first point, make sure that you set the stage of your career with God. Um, the second point, make sure you move towards the area of your greatest strength. Make sure that you're strategic. Make sure that you're looking and you, you're interviewing people. You know what you're going to get at the end of any course or any career you're doing. Um, then make sure that you're setting intentional career goals. Where do you want to be in five years' time? Where do you want to be in 10 years' time? Do you still want to be working for the same employer? Do you want to be making much more than what you are making right now? Then set long-term and short-term goals to be able to achieve um, those um, your purpose. The next thing, serve God greatly while you're in college, whether you're an undergrad, you're a graduate student, you're working, make sure that you're serving God. And lastly, make sure that you're swaying into the kingdom of God. And God is going to help us all to be able to um, reach our, our real potentials. And by the grace of God, I see billionaires in this room in Jesus' name. I see people that will build the kingdom of God, people that will go out there and shake the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we just want to pr praise you. We want to thank you. We want to um, give you all the glory because we know that you're going to, oh Lord, Father, make all grace abound towards us. We know that, Father, that you're going to help us to be able to build our careers and you're going to even help us, oh Lord, to be all-rounded Christians who would give our best for you in Jesus' name. We pray that none of us here, we just have money but no peace, oh Lord, Father, because you are the one that makes the difference between them that serve you and serve you not. Sometimes calamity Calamities might come into the world, calamities like COVID, people don't see it coming, but because God has seen it coming, God will make a way when we serve him. And Father, I pray that you will even help us, that you will make a way for us, oh Lord, Father, in ways we don't see in Jesus' name. We pray that you will continue to help us and keep us and even continue, even as we continue in this singles retreat, Father, we pray that your glory and your grace will continue to shine over us in Jesus' name. Have your way in our lives. In in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. One person? Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions? Okay, sister love.
Thanks. Thank you, sir. Sir, how did you balance um, starting the church and school? Like, how are the females? Okay. So, Sister Love's question was, how did I balance um, starting a church when I was in college? Um, it wasn't easy. Um, number one, there was a pastor that was coming from another church that was kind of supporting us with that, um, with that project then. But um, I think, I, honestly speaking, it wasn't easy. It was just a time of um, real working for God. I, I can remember there are some times, honestly, I was behind on some of the work I was doing because I was also working for another professor. There are some times I was really behind and I just go back and it's time for me to read and I'm like, God, just help me. It's, I wouldn't say you should have to, everyone should have to put in so much effort like that, but definitely find a way to serve God. It wasn't an easy thing. Um, I could even remember sometimes where I was even complaining of burnout because it was a lot, um, a lot for me to be able to do at that time. But I thank God I, I was able to do it. The church is still there in Stillwater, Clown Matthew today. Um, but I thank God for the grace to be able to do that, yeah. Um, and that question is that big, My question is, what are some tips um, or resources that you can give us about how to network effectively within businesses, from person to person, um, that sort of thing? Okay, that is a wonderful question. How to network effectively. Networking does not come naturally. It's hard um, to keep people in your network for such a long time. But one, one tip I would give you is um, have a notebook. Have a list of your network, right? Um, maybe people you've met and you think you want to keep a relationship with them. Go the extra mile to ask them, what is your birthday? Or something like that, right? Or go the extra mile to ask them of one important thing in their life. Um, make that um, list. And when you, they are... Um, Things like Christmas, Thanksgiving, make sure that you're sending messages to those people. It goes a long way um, because, <laughs> for instance, if you need their help in like 10 years' time and you haven't spoken to them or told them Happy New Year or Merry Christmas, they're like, they forget about you. But just having that list of people, having their emails that you send um, a card, possibly every valentine's no no not valentine's day every christmas <laughs> every christmas or um, new year you send them a card and tell them oh thank you for being an important part of my life right um it really goes a long way to keep your network and that network can grow with like for a long time and that's what a lot of people that make it in business do they keep their network and they keep them close. They don't really need to reach out to them every day, but just them sending that message once a year sometimes just breaks the barrier. And sometimes if it's on their bed, they'll be like, oh, wow, this person remembered my birthday. Those small, small things really help in developing your network. Yeah. Thanks. That's an amazing question. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Right, go ahead. Yeah, my question is very simple. You can hear me now. Okay. Yes. Hello. Okay. I just wanted to find out, do you have any uh, advice for uh, uh, folks that probably just uh, you've got into an industry and um, you want to far exceed and, you know, optimize your opportunity to, to be best at what you do initially starting off um, your career, okay. but you are in the midst of people who are like well, well experienced, like 30 years. And <laughs> so how do you uh, age your game in, your, in that particular you know, kind of uh, situation? Yeah. Okay, that is an amazing question. So how do you aid your game when you just get into industry? How do you make yourself successful and how to be um, strategic in those places? So um, what I would say is, first of all, know who you are know that you bring something to the plate. Even though those people have been here, there for about 30 years, some of them don't have the newest technologies. Um, some of them honestly have some outdated skills, but that doesn't mean you should be proud. 
but just make sure that you first of all know that you bring something to the table. I tell people don't go into meetings continuously without having a word to say. Always make sure that you are speaking out, you are bringing out ideas. If you're in a meeting with those people, they have 30 years of experience, thank God for them. But you also have something, make sure that you're always putting forth your best foot. You're not, um, you're not that type of person that goes to work and just sit down there, do your work and go out. No, every meeting, make sure that um, you've planned what you would say in that meeting. Um, make sure that you are um, also delivering excellently on your work, right? Um, make sure that when they look at your work, they're like, oh, wow, this is a very nice work that you've presented to us. Thank you, right? Another thing I would say is look at your manager. What makes your manager um, stay up late? Learn what your manager does and take some of those work from your manager. So for instance, if your manager um, delegates a tax to you, I always, I, honestly speaking, I like people that own tax that I delegate to them. I don't like when I'm the one that I have to come back and ask them like, oh, what is the status of that tax I gave to you? No, I mean, I prefer when the person is like, oh, you gave me this, I've been able to achieve this. I was even able to research and even do much more than you told me to do. Make sure that don't take tax as tax. Take tax as more like, this is my own job. This is So look at the job like your own company. This is my own company. This is my own job. I own this job. It is my duty to make sure that this job is successful. And when you behave like that, that is what actually pushes you forward and forward up to where you need to be. And that really makes the difference over time. Your sister Elizabeth. So my, so my question is, um, okay, like, I was recently promoted not too long ago, and I'm already kind of itching to get out of the pro current promotion I'm in, because I want something better. How do you, I effectively do that if I'm already meeting, exceeding work expectations, but maybe getting some pushback of, well, you just got into this new role, like, how, when do you know, like, okay, it's really time for me to, like, ask for more, not just money-wise, but more titles and things like that. Okay, so you were just recently promoted, but you feel that where you are now is not, you're not really maximizing your potential, yeah. that you could do more. Yeah. Well, I think w what you can do is, right from where you are currently, um, start doing the more that you could do with a new role, even with your old role, right? A manager is not a manager by title. A manager is a manager by the job they do, right? So I, you could see someone that is <laughs> their first, they are in their first year of their work, but they are managing people. They are bringing things together. So start doing that at your current role. And I don't know how your company might work. If, if it's stated that at this next role, these are the activities you need to be completing at the next role, Make sure that you're completing that, those activities for the next role. And when it's time for you to do your performance development, you can now tell them, see, I've achieved what I need to achieve at this next role. And I think I should be due for promotion to this next role, right? And you can show, make sure you're also taking documentation. Make sure you're documenting everything you're doing so that, and make sure you're also asking for feedback. Maybe you worked with somebody on this. I don't know. Different companies do feedbacks in different ways. Make sure you're asking for feedback. When you work on a project, make sure that um, you tell them, oh, can you give me feedback? I, I think I did this and this and this on this project. Can you send me a feedback, a written feedback notes that I did so well on this so that you can be able to present your documentation. I did well on this and I think I deserve the promotion. Yeah, and I think that would really help. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I think we're done. Okay. At the back, there's one more. Hi. Uh, I wanted to ask, how do we sustain passion at workplace? I mean, especially when we're working from home and the work is so monotonous, doing the same thing, especially in IT field, it gets really repetitive. So how can we sustain the passion? 
Okay. So how to sustain passion at work? Honestly speaking, I still deal with that. Um, because when you do something repeatedly, you kind of get tired of it. It's normal, right? Um, sustaining passion sometimes require you to honestly start looking at, okay, I'm really good at this thing. I need a new gig. Um, I, or I, need a, I need something new. Because once you've done something over and over and over again, working from home, you're just so um, tired of doing it. And I think that's when you should either start looking for a new job, right? Or looking for a new role or position within that company. So that, because if you continue staying at that point where you're passion, you don't have any passion for what you're doing, and um, it's becoming boring to you, you are not growing also, right? And you're just remaining at the same point. So that is the time to start looking at, okay, can I learn a new skill or can I look for a new job that is current, maybe very closely related to what I'm doing, but maybe I'll be using my skills to do something else, right? So I think it's just a matter of, I think it might just be the time for you to deviate when you start finding yourself lacking passion. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? <laughs> okay, Brakarele. I just want to ask if it's right. Um, I was just saying that I would love to link um, you up with someone. So I have a friend who is doing a PhD somewhere, and she doesn't have a church, no fellowship, nothing. Then I've been encouraging her to start one. So I think you speaking with her might be a good motivation. So I want to ask, could I link you up with a person? I would say sure, but is the person, I mean, it's, it's, if, she, if she's God. willing to start. She just doesn't have enough motivation. <laughs> Starting a church is not a small thing. It's really a lot. Um, it's really a lot, but um, definitely we could talk about it more. Um, yeah. Okay, I think we'll, let's pray. Okay, one more person and we'll pray. Um, hello? Yeah. I want us to ask like in a situation where you are supposed to like uh you already set your goals and your plans uh, okay four years time i'll graduate but, but then some un un unforeseen circumstances occur yes yeah, so maybe maybe you are uh, Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Like uh, in a situation when you already plan that by four years, in four years' time, you would graduate, but then uh, no unforeseen circumstances occur, like maybe you fail an exam or a class and have to write it in another semester or something like that. So, and then, and how do we cope? Like. You see your mates, your peers already graduating, they are, you know, moving forward then. Uh, how are we going to cope in that situation? Yeah. That is a good question and I sympathize and empathize with um, anyone going through that situation. It's not an easy thing, especially when you see people that you're supposed to graduate together go ahead of you or some unsec like uns unseen circumstances come to you. And you have to first of all know that it's it, as much as possible, it's not your fault, especially when it's something that you can't control, right? If it's like maybe you lost your source of income, you first of all have to give yourself grace that this is something that I'm a mistake that I must have made. Even if it's your own fault, first of all, forgive yourself, right? Then go back and start again. Pick up your, what are your strengths? It gives you the chance to start again. It, it might look like an unforeseen circumstance. If it's a, a, if it's a financial matter, I would say um, that one would require you to deal with it differently, possibly reach out to people around you that could help you. But if it's a case where you just fail the class, pick up yourself, forgive yourself first of all, 
then um, try to go back. Sometimes people feel because they are not doing things that they are strong in, right? Look back, does it mean you need to change your course? Does it mean you need to move to a different field? Um, be strategic, then, then plan out how you're going to recover from that and try to um, work towards your plan of recovery. I hope that helps. Okay, thank you.